Hi, this is Brandon Moon with Leland Fly Fishing. I want to welcome you to our fly tying night tonight where we're going to finish up the October caddis type thing that we've tied. We want to remind you that any of these patterns can be changed in size and color to fish any other caddis pattern. We just decided since it's October, pretty much October here and the October caddis are going to start popping, we wanted to do them in that theme. Um, this one is a guide fly, meaning it's going to be super effective killer with fish, catching a lot of fish, but it's also going to be a quick, easy, efficient tie. So not a lot of steps, not a lot of materials, and that makes it a fast tie and easy to produce. So I want to also welcome you to... We want to welcome you to take and like your favorite videos, leave us a comment, especially if you have a question, please ask and give us the opportunity to answer that for you. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit the bell so you receive notification of future videos. With this we're going to go ahead and get started and we're going to tie this pattern on the Moonlit ML058, this is a wide gape jig hook. We're going to be using the 3.5 millimeter slotted copper tungsten bead. Okay, for our thread, we're using Semperfly's Classic Wax 12 aught in fluorescent orange. We're putting this on a Stone Flow Elite disc drag bobbin. This is going to give us great control of the thread. It creates good tension and we really enjoy tying on that. So we'll go ahead and put our hook in the vise now and get started with this. We'll start this just behind the hook eye. Well, behind that bead anyways. And then we'll go and create a nice smooth underbody using this tag end to kind of help push each wrap into the previous wrap. Remember the underbody is the foundation to your fly so you want to make sure you create a great smooth even foundation for this. Okay. Clip that off there at the back end of the hook. For the body on this, we're going to be using Rust Orange Wild Barred Turkey Bayat from Nature Spirit. You can see I'm pulling this from the long thin side rather than from the shorter, wider side. Okay, so we're going to take that, we want to make sure and moisten this bayat up. It's great to, if you're tying up a bunch of these to moisten them up in a nice wet paper towel or maybe even a um, little glass of water. Okay, I'm going to tie this in. There's two, two sides to this. One side has a ridge. The other side has a little bit of translucency to it. I'm going to tie this in with the ridge on top and the non-ridge translucent side on the bottom. We'll go ahead and get started wrapping this in. Clip that off there. Now we'll just finish securing that in. I'm going to create a taper to this body with my thread. So I'm going to go rearward almost all the way to the back and then start wrapping forward with nice tight wraps right next to each other. Nice tight uniform wraps. Now we'll go rearward again. Stopping short of our previous stop point and forward. And we're going to do this about three, 
or four times to give us a good taper to this body. You don't have to do this. I choose to do it because I like how the taper in my body looks. Now here at this front, I want the very end of this to actually be level. That's going to allow me to give a nice tie-off point to that by it. Okay. So before I start wrapping that by it, I'm going to take this Loctite. Okay, I'm going to take I'm going to put a little bit of this on here. This is just going to help this buy it to secure to that hook, especially if it comes out of my little clip here, my hackle pliers. I use the Loon ergonomical pliers for this. And I want the back side of that, of this to be the ridge. So I want the ridge on this by it to come in on the back side. That allows me to be able to place that ridge right on top of that little translucent edge there of this by it. And that's going to give me a really good taper to this body in the ridge of the fly. So the ribbing is going to be nice and evenly spaced and tapered. Okay, I'm going to secure that in. Now we'll take and clip that out, and then we're ready for our thorax. Okay, so we're going to take some Wonder Wax dubbing. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of this Wonder Wax on my thread here. This wax works good to help secure that dubbing in. For the dubbing, we're going to be using Vicuna dubbing. Okay, I'm going to use the Fiery Brown. This is in the UV selection on this. I really, really like this one a lot. So we're going to take just a small little pinch, not a lot. I'm going to kind of divvy it up a little bit and put it in in little sections so that I can get a good tight dubbing on this rope. This gives me a nice good buggy collar on this. Easy to dub. And they've got an amazing amount of color choices. This is my favorite dubbing versus using hair's ear. I'll pull those fibers back just a little bit just to kind of pull them back and secure them. Okay, for the hackle, I'm going to be using Brahma Golden Brown from Whiting Farms. I use the Brahma on my size 12s, 10, 12s, and 14s on these patterns. If I get into sometimes the 14s and 16s for sure, I go to a hand saddle or a hand cape. For Some hand saddles have 16s, some do not, so you kind of just got to play it by ear. So I'm going to pull a feather out. It's going to look just like this. Okay, and then I'm going to take that feather, I'm going to print all of that fluff off okay and then one side I'm gonna strip one side off almost all the way to the top and the reason I'm doing that is when I tie this in okay you can see I've got this bare stem here and I'm gonna wrap it this way so that bare stem is gonna hit up against the hook shank this is going to give me better control you can see how the fibers are automatically when I tie this in in this way 
they're going to be facing rearward naturally so I don't have to try and doctor them up I don't have a whole bunch of fibers pushing and protruding all the way around so I took that tie in point there I tie that in pull it rearward and I'm going to secure that down one more time I'll pull that stem out of the way trim that part off now I'm going to trim the stem down just a little bit okay I'm going to take my tie flies hackle tweezers I'm going to start wrapping this now when I'm wrapping this set this thread off to the side just so that it's out of the way when I'm wrapping this I'm going to palmer it okay so you can see I'm going to kind of fluff those back but I'm also going to make sure I'm not catching any of these fibers as I'm wrapping and that's going to allow me to get a nice and good soft hackle. So you can see my hackle, I haven't even had to doctor any of that up. I'm really not going to. And that is really, really good. I try and use all of this hackle on this stem. There I tied that and secured it down on the back side. Now you can see I pushed this hackle stem back. Okay. Did another two wraps. We'll trim that out. Okay. I want to have a whole bunch of fibers in there. Now I can just kind of doctor any of these up that need to be doctored. You can see on the bottom there's one down there. So I'll pull that back, give it a good couple wraps, and that'll secure that out. You can see I'm using this fluorescent orange thread just to give me a hot spot on this collar. And I use the 12 aught because it it lays flat and it's small so it's not going to build up a lot of bulk in case I get a little bit closer it's just easier if I start crowding that just to have a smaller thread just in case so we'll do our whip finish on that I'll take my whip finish tool that has a little snipper the Loon ergonomical whip finisher to finish this off I'm going to take some Solarez thin hard. You can use the medium one as well. I'm just going to lay a little bit down there. Now I will take my bodkin and I'll smooth that out. making sure I get this up into that thread so I help secure my knot some. Now I've got that nice and good. I'll take my UV pen and I'll cure that. You can see I've got a nice hot spot on there. Okay, and there you have a jig caddis beadhead soft hackle with a buy it body. We appreciate you watching. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you drop us a comment. Make sure you 
subscribe to the channel and hit the bell to receive future notifications and we look forward to seeing you with us again next week. Have a great evening.